Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. Whether you're a technology pro looking to master the Kusto query language or new to the world of IT and looking to learn your first language, 10 Minute KQL is a place to level up your skills. This is the 12th session in the Kusto query language beginner series. This series is intended to take you from a level with minimal technical experience to writing your first basic queries using the KQL language. These short 10 minute sessions will teach you KQL, allow you to get hands-on practice in a lab environment, and provide some homework to practice after the session. In the last session, we talked about debugging queries. In today's session, we'll have a debugging challenge. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you wanna receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. Now that we're done with the beginner series learning lessons, we'll finish off the series with a debugging challenge and two quiz sessions. If you already know KQL but haven't used it in a while, these sessions can be used to refresh your memory on the basics. In today's debugging challenge, we'll display a query on the screen for 10 seconds to see if you can find the issue. If you need more time, pause the video as long as you need to find the bug. Here's the first one. The issue in this query is on the project line. When we end the statement with a comma, there's an expectation of another item. When we remove the comma at the end of the statement, the query will run. If you need a refresher on project, you can review session seven. Query two. When we use in to list strings, we place the strings inside of parentheses. Each individual string needs to be in quotes. Once we add either a single or a double quote to each string in this case, the query will run. Query three. One of the first things we do in a query is either define a let statement which we haven't discussed yet, or define the data source. Since it's the initial anchor and starting point for the query, it doesn't need a pipe. Once we remove the pipe from the first line, the query runs. You can refer to session three for a review of the pipe and of data sources. Query four. When we use clauses and operators, they're case sensitive. In this case, where on line two is capitalized and it's causing the query to fail. If you need a refresher on where, you can find it in session three. Query five. When we use extend, we're creating a new field that doesn't already exist. One of the first steps is to define the name of the new field, then define what the new field will contain. Extend statements need an equal symbol between the name of the new field and what the field contains. You can refer to session 10 for a view on extend. Query six. When we sort or order results, we need to refer to a field. We should use sort by instead of just sort for the query to run. You can refer to session six to review sort by. Query seven. When using between for time values, we need to add two periods. When we replace and with two periods, the query runs. You can refer to session nine for a view of between and time values. Query eight. When we use between, there's an outer set of parentheses as well as two inner sets of parentheses on each time value. When we replace the quotes with parentheses, the query will run. You can refer to session nine for a view of time values. 
Query 9. When using a go, a greater than, less than, or equal to symbol is used. Refer to session 9 for a review of time values. Query 10. Field names must have the proper capitalization or the query will fail. You can refer to session 4 for a review of KQL syntax rules. Query 11. When we use between on two time values, the earliest must be on the left and the latest must be on the right. You can refer to session nine for a review of time values. Query 12. In KQL, you can use many standardized versions of date time groups. In this case, year, month, day should be used. Refer to session 9 for a review of time values. Query 13. If we want to search inside of a table, such as sign in logs, we can do it in a couple different ways. One way is to first define the table and then write search after. You can refer to session 10 for a review on search. Query 14. Common time references are S for second, M for minute, H for hour, and D for day. There are no references to months or years. Refer to session 9 for a review of time values. Query 15. In Azure Data Explorer, or ADX, the cluster, database, and table hierarchy is commonly used. A table needs to be identified so the field names can be referenced. Refer to Session 3 for a review of ADX table references. Query 16. When we use quotes, we can either use a single or a double quote as long as there isn't an apostrophe inside of the string. Whatever we use, we need to select the same type for the left and the right side of the string. That's it, how did you do? If you got all the answers correct, or you only missed one answer, great job. You have a good eye for picking out errors and you're ready to move on. If you miss more than one answer, that's okay too. We're still in the learning process and it takes time to pick out the details. Spending time understanding why things don't work will help you write queries that do work over time. If you only missed a few questions, it's best to do a refresher on those areas before moving on. If you miss five or more questions, it's best to review the entire beginner series again with a focus on getting hands-on practice writing queries in the free test environments provided before moving on. That's it for today's debugging challenge. In the next two sessions, we'll have quizzes to end the beginner series and to test your knowledge before moving on to the intermediate series. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.